of you may have already watched the video in which I discussed failing out of nursing school, but if you want to know how I failed out, got back in, struggled through fundamentals, had to take it again, just a hot mess, but I still passed my NCLEX with 75 questions. If you want to know how I did that, stay tuned and watch this video. So I'm going to let you know now, it's going to sound a little crazy because um, I did a lot, but it's worth it and it pays off and it's temporary, guys. Um, I had to put my social life on a complete hold. I know there are some people who can just like sit down, take a test, pass it, like based off of memory and flying colors, but I'm not one of those people and I could not take no chances. I had student loans to worry about and I was like, how am I gonna pay this money back? I have to pass this time and I need to get this license. So um, I set up just like every stipulation that I possibly could and I ended up being successful. So I'm gonna go over all of those things with you. The first thing is read before you go to class. There is going to be an assigned text and sometimes it is a lot, but definitely try to at least skim it. Try to go over like the subtitles and the titles and like skim through the, the text really quick. But at least try to read over it and become familiar with it before you go in so that when the teacher brings things up in class, it's like, oh, I remember that already. Or I, I remember reading that last night. So it's just kind of like a recall type of thing opposed to it being the first time that you've ever been introduced to the topic at hand. Definitely read. I would skim before I went to class and I would also take notes before I went to class. Even if there was a PowerPoint presentation online, I wrote it down. I wanted to be sure that I retained the information. So if I had to read it, if I had to write it, if I had to listen to the teacher say it again, that's three different times that this information is being brought to you and processed through your brain. So it's more likely that you're gonna be able to remember it. Now, a lot of my teachers did PowerPoints, thank the Lord. So I would print those out after I made my own notes, I would print those out and I would take those to class with me and then I would write notes on them again. I don't care if she went over every single thing that was on the PowerPoint, I was writing things down. Because a lot of times like you'll write something and then you'll remember like, I wrote this next to such and such picture or such and such point on the PowerPoint and it, it'll be easy for you to recall it during an exam. So I would rewrite my notes in class and then immediately after class, I would go and find a quiet space and go over the notes again. I think that helped me a ton because a lot of times I would close my notes and then just open them again right before an exam was about to happen, maybe a week or so before. But when you go over it right after it's been introduced, you know exactly what the teacher has said, which is likely exactly what's going to be on um, their exam or exactly from the book that they've gotten them from. Because a lot of teachers use NCLEX books to get their questions from. So it's like that information is immediately being brought up to you again. So it's just very, very repetitive. I had to do a lot of things that were repetitive to just get it to stick in my mind. So that's what I would do for exams. Now, speaking of NCLEX books and NCLEX questions, I purchased an NCLEX book while I was in nursing school and I used the questions while I was preparing for nursing exams because that style of question in nursing school, like, come on now, y'all. It's ridiculous where they're like, um, every answer could be right but what's the most right or what would be the first thing and i'm like oh my god because you're just not used to taking tests like that so taking those questions over and over and over again kind of prepares your mind and it helps you to get used to it it's like okay i can figure out the answer because i'm used to seeing this type of thing um so yeah that definitely made it easier so i did that for exams in school but i also did that right before i was about to take my NCLEX as well, just taking tons and tons of NCLEX style questions. Flashcards. I would also make flashcards. Pharmacology was crazy hard for me because when you're in nursing school, you don't really see those drugs all the time. They barely let you pass medicine at your clinicals, um, let alone like hang a drip or anything like that. So it's like, I'm not going to see these medicines. They're just not going to be ingrained in my brain. So I would make flashcards for farm i would write down all types of drugs and i would put the drug name on the back and then i would put like the action and the usage and all that jazz on the back of the flashcard and just quiz myself all the time um, and i would do that for each exam and then i saved all of those flashcards for the very end and just tried to look at as many as i could right before i took my NCLEX. so i was really into 
writing things down over and over but i also wanted to make sure i stimulated every single part of my brain i also use khan academy i love 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 khan academy i highly recommend them um, they have videos on youtube and they are so detailed so great if there was something that the teacher went over in class and i like kind of sort of didn't understand it or i needed a visual representation even if not i would recommend you go look because the way that they walk you through things like it just really gets you to understand because they break it down so minutely like the someone not even in the medical field could understand it so i would highly recommend you watch those videos but they go over everything um cardiac disorders like um i keep going to cardiac for some reason but like uh, neurological disorders they go over everything whether there's like a medication that you don't understand how a disease process works they have videos for all of it and they just like it's like a eight minute video and it just completely walks you through something that a full lecture was over so again it just like repeats that information and gets it to stick in your brain in a different way like that's a visual representation another thing that i did for a uh, visual representation and trying to get a picture inside of my head was i actually made these huge poster boards i'm gonna add them to this video so you can see what they look like but i made huge huge poster boards where i would have like a picture of a disease process that i had drawn out and I would just show how the disease process worked. Um, I would also have like medications on there, like medical treatment, risk factors, signs and symptoms, preventative measures, um, just everything that you needed to know for the disease so that you could make an educated decision when you sit down to take an exam. Like a lot of times you draw out this poster board about this disease and it's multiple questions because you have on there the medications and the process and the risk factors and all the things. So that helped me tremendously. I would have like maybe five poster boards for one exam, but it would cover like every single question. So that definitely, definitely helped me. So we talked about writing, we talked about visual representation, and the last is hearing. Hearing and speaking. Teach back definitely helped me. So what I would do is, we're like, you can't record. I'm like, why? Like, what, sis, what are you increment? Like, what? Okay, or whatever. I'm like, are you breaking some kind of rule right now in this lecture? Are you telling me something that ain't true? I didn't understand that. But some teachers would say, no, you can't record. Um... And in those cases, I would record myself, which sounds crazy. Um, and then, so I would record their lectures, but I would, I would also record me. What I would do is the study guide. If the teacher gave you a study guide, that's great. That is freaking awesome because they're pinning down like what's going to be on the exam. But if not, like I said, make your own study guide, like through your notes and through their PowerPoints, make your own study guide of things to focus on. And I would read back my study guide on my voice memos on my phone. Like y'all was doing the most because I was like, I cannot fail again. So I would read back every single thing that was on my study guide and record it. And then on my way to school, on my commute or anywhere that I was going, or if I had downtime, I would listen to myself. So I would listen over and over again to this information. Um, or even just like right before an exam, like on my way, I would like just be listening like, no, I'm not going to study. I'm just going to relax, but I'm going to like listen and make sure that I can recall this information. So that helped things become super duper ingrained. Another thing that I recommend is study groups. I remember going through college and being like, it's me against the world. It's my grades. I can't worry about anybody else. I'm here to succeed and leave. Um, and so I, I just really didn't like to work as a team or as a group because I felt like somebody was always dropping the ball. But in nursing school, you really, really need each other. It's like the exact opposite um, I got with a group of girls and sometimes like all five of us would meet up. Sometimes it would be only two of us that could meet up, but we would get into groups and we would go over our notes. And so one person would be like, okay, so tell me about this disease. Tell me about this medication. Tell me about this. And you are just recalling every single thing on top of your head that you know. And then if you're in like a large group, everybody is chiming in and there may be something that someone wrote down or that someone knows that you didn't know. And as soon as you can't recall that and you hear someone else say it, that's going to stick with you. Also, 
if you say something and it's wrong, someone is going to correct you and you're never going to get it wrong again because you're going to remember that, okay, that was absolutely positively wrong. So that cannot be the answer when it comes to exam time. These are things that I did for school that kind of bled over into me um, preparing for the NCLEX because I felt like it was kind of all the same. You're taking those questions throughout your years as well. So it's kind of the same. It's just don't stress out, don't freak out. In addition to those things, I took ATI, Kaplan, and UVerse. Like, I was not playing no games. I was like, look, it has taken me this long to get to this moment. I will be darned if I fail. <laughs> so I was doing everything that I could to set myself up for success. So ATI was something that my school, like they had a contract with like ATI. So we had taken like ATI exams throughout the entire course of me being in nursing school. And then at the very end, you could sign up for this extra course that prepared you for the NCLEX. So I did that. Um, and it was like a three day course, I think, where, you know, you're just going over questions and how to look at the exam. And they're telling you how to study. I would recommend that, um, especially if it's like free. I love, love, love Kaplan. Love, love, love Kaplan. They have something called a decision tree. Um, and it like you, you get a textbook and it shows you like how to use the decision tree to make an educated guess, I guess. Um, but just like how to answer a question, how to break it down to find the best answer. And you can use this tree for any question. So it's not even necessarily like I'm going to teach you exactly what every single disorder is, what every single drug is, and how to make like the best answer on every single question. No, it's like, how do you use this tree? to narrow down any kind of question. It was so, so good, so, so valuable. And then I used UVerse. Now I'm gonna give you all a little tip, a little trick. I used UVerse with my study group and all of us just pitched in because we were broke. We were in nursing school and nursing school was expensive and they tell you not to work and all of these things. I only worked like one day a week, I had no money. So we just all gave like maybe like 10 or $15, I can't remember. I think it was like maybe like 10 or $15 where we just all pitched in and bought it together and then we just shared access. So we all just like would log on and take so many different questions and we would just practice questions all the time, all the time, all the time. Because the key is just getting used to that form of questions. That's all I did. I know it sounds like a lot, but a lot of that was what I had to do to get through nursing school because I had experienced those failures. So I was like, never again. So, you know, some people can do more. Some people may do less, um, whatever works for you. But I just wanted to give you as many resources as possible. And I also want to tell you, like, don't be anxious. Don't psych yourself out. If you have made it through nursing school, you sitting down for the exam, you got this. You have already practiced this type of question. You've already been successful with this type of question. And you've already like prepared yourself as much as possible. One other thing I want to touch on, because a lot of people were like, you got to take it as soon as possible. You got to take it within this amount of time or you need to take this many questions per day. It's different for everybody. I think I took it two months after I graduated. They were like, don't wait too long. I took it two months um, and I did take questions like daily, but I felt like I was doing way less than everybody else. I'm like, oh my God, you're taking like 200 questions a day. Maybe I should be taking that much. Like it's going to be different for everybody. Just like do what works for you. If you've prepared throughout school and you have like signed up for Kaplan, you've signed up for ACI, you signed up for UVerse, you know, you've signed up for these resources and you feel equipped, likely you can do it. Don't compare your journey to anyone else's. And I'm just wishing the best for you all. I wish you all nothing but love and success. I had to share this with you. So thank you all for watching and can't wait to hear about your iPass stories. <laughs>